Hi, I'm Michael Welch, President and Chief Executive Officer of Rocky Mountain High Brands. Welcome to our podcast today. Today's number 24, and it's been a long time since we've been here, so welcome back. So today we'd like to talk about a couple of things, and I think we're going to start with our quarterly financial statements. So I've invited Jens Milky, our CFO, to discuss those. So I'm going to turn this over to Jens. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Um, so I'm going to hit a few of the highlights uh, of the, the 10Q. Uh, we filed yesterday uh, after filing our uh, five-day extension, so uh, we did make it in time. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure the, the P&L probably uh, raised a few uh, questions among our uh, investors and, and followers, so I thought I would give some background on what, uh, how the numbers came about and, and what they represent um, uh, as people look at our 10Q. So this is obviously for the quarter into June 30. And uh, the first number on the P&L sales number uh, was obviously a disappointment for us, as I'm sure it was for a lot of, of people. Um, our sales for the quarter ended June were uh, 36,572. And that compared to 72,674 in the comparable quarter of last year. So we ran into a, a significant headwind uh, this quarter uh, related to uh, what was called merchant services. And what merchant services is, those are the folks that uh, facilitate the credit card payments on our website. And in uh, April of this year, we were notified uh, by our merchant services provider uh, that they were getting out of the cannabis business. And that was uh, for, uh, we understand, approximately 3,000 of their customers. And so we, along with those 3,000 other uh, customers, scrambled to find other merchant services. And as you can imagine, uh, right now, uh, there aren't a lot of merchant services uh, providers in, in the cannabis space, uh, even in just the hemp space like, like we are. So it, uh, it took us a while to find uh, merchant services providers. So a lot of our um, customers and I'm sure a lot of our investors noticed when they went onto our website, uh, things were being rerouted to uh, Amazon. And that's obviously um, an issue for us for a lot of reasons. We can't run specials like we would on our website. We can't uh, run our wholesaler program, which is becoming a more significant piece of our online business at this point. So um, as a result of all that, our sales really suffered uh, in, the, in the second quarter. So uh, they're down, as, as you see, by, by half. Uh, now the good news is uh, we finally secured in early July merchant services, but we were down uh, for a full month in merchant services, just as we were starting to get traction. Uh, again, after having been down earlier this year, um, we had to cancel a lot of our advertising because uh, it didn't make sense to advertise to a website that people couldn't uh, make purchases to. So um, sales are down. And in, as I mentioned in July, merchant services came back up. Uh, the provider, we're, we're still running into some issues. So again, people that have been out on our website to, to buy our product are probably noticing sometimes uh, their credit cards are, are being declined or uh, they're, they're getting charged additional fees and whatnot. So that is something we're cognizant of and working through. But again, took a, took a big toll on our numbers uh, in, the, in the second quarter compared to last year when we had just launched the hemp brand and we're really starting to see traction at that point as, as well on, on those products. A uh, couple other things I wanted to point out on um, our profit and loss. Uh, as far as our operating uh, expenses, our GNA is uh, down uh, approximately 200,000, a little over 200,000. And uh, that is due to a concerted effort by, by management to manage our GNA costs better. So we're, we're trying to manage our payroll, we're trying to manage all of our uh, discretionary spending and whatnot, because obviously, you know, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of dollars can go out the door very quickly if you don't watch those. So we've been trying to manage those down um, over the last couple of years. And again, I think we're seeing success. If you look at the uh, 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 six months ended June 30, again, you'll see a downward trend there. So uh, that, that is due to, to those efforts. 
Um, in advertising and marketing, um, this this was the decrease this year uh, this year compared to last year of about uh, fifty thousand is due to what I mentioned before the the issue with our website and being able to sell and the fact that since we didn't have a website uh, with e-commerce on it uh, we reduced our advertising because again why drive business to a website where people can't buy so that that's down uh, compared to last year when again we were launching the the hemp website um, in, I thought I'd walk through some of the other income exp and expense because I know from time to time we get questions from people uh, on what those are. Um, I th obviously, interest expense is, is just the interest we, we pay on our, on our debt. And generally speaking, as our debt levels are going down and we're trying to manage those down, the interest expense, as you would imagine, would, would go down. So we're, I think, doing a, a good job of, of working our debt down as, as we can. Um, we did have some debt modification this year, and so there's a gain on the extinguishment of some debt. Uh, that's kind of a, an accounting thing. Uh, when you modify debt, you usually take a gain or a loss, and, and that kind of is, is where that comes from. Um, there is also a gain on lawsuit judgment um, and uh, settlement uh, this quarter that we didn't have last quarter, and that is part of the uh, larger lawsuits uh, that we've got going on. This was a settlement we did with uh, certain of the defendants, uh, and it represented about a $200,000 um, uh, payment toward us, uh, as well as a forgiveness of uh, a payable uh, by the, the defendants. So we uh, took that as a, as a gain on the P&L this, uh, this quarter. And then obviously our, our favorite, the derivative liability, we always get questions about that. Um, it's more complicated accounting, uh, but essentially uh, relates to what our stock price is doing and our convertible debt and, and some of the warrants that we have outstanding. So uh, there was this, this quarter, there was a charge or a loss compared to um, a, a, a credit or a gain last year. But uh, again, that all has to do with kind of how the, the price of the stock trends up and down uh, from from quarter to quarter. So I wanted to hit those high spots uh, okay. on the on the P&L. And then the other thing I wanted to uh, point out in the queue is the subsequent events footnote, um, because we had a couple of items that uh, uh, I think are important to the company. And I know we're going to talk about a little bit uh, in a little bit of detail uh, uh, further on in the podcast. But um, the second paragraph of the uh, subsequent events footnote talks about our Green Lotus contract. And so we've had uh, this contract with uh, the folks at uh, Green Lotus. Uh, they're now part of the Freedom Leaf Company, which is a publicly, publicly traded company. And we've had a PO, uh, we've, we got a PO from them, um, I guess a couple of months ago. Uh, we've had a contract with them for a while. Uh, we have a PO with them for about for three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I think Christian's going to be talking uh, a little bit about um, uh, the timing and, and all that. But uh, the the point of the subsequent event note here is we did make a deposit with our processor um, in uh, in August, and so we uh, uh, have have gotten that uh, production scheduled, and we're we're about ready to go on that. So uh, we felt that was something that needed to be pointed out in, in the subsequent events. And then also our contract with CBD Life um, before the end of the third quarter, which is coming up at the end of September, uh, we're planning to uh, produce and deliver the two million cans on the purchase order that we've received uh, from CBD Life. And so that would result in approximately $1.1 million uh, of revenue being booked uh, in the third quarter. So uh, between the two of those, uh, we're talking about a, a million four fifty, close to close to a million five in revenue for the quarter, on top of what we're doing in, in with with other customers and online and whatnot. So um, uh, I think we're expecting the third quarter to look much different than than what the second quarter looks. Okay. Well, I appreciate you pointing that out. I think mm -hmm. that's useful information. So. Um Great. So anything else on the financials? Uh, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, I think I covered uh, everything I wanted to cover. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, we're uh, planning 
uh, you know, a strong September and uh, uh, plan to have the, the 10 Q out hopefully with uh, uh, within the normal uh, deadlines uh, in, in November. So we're looking for a good third quarter. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. that report. Thanks. So Mr. Vega. Hello. How are you today? <laughs> good. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 So I understand you have a, a brief update for us on both Green Lotus and CBD Life as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just to follow up that uh, we have production coming up for Green Lotus uh, in September. We're starting the third, fourth and fifth. Um, it's 200,000 cans right now. Um, and we're looking forward to the next run sooner or after that. I mean, one of the um, uh, one of the concepts behind this drink was to promote it, even though we didn't have it ready yet as far as production. Uh, <laughs> Green Lotus team has done a very good job promoting the drink and pretty much pre-selling a lot of it. I think right now they had to come to a stop, and they're roughly about a three hundred thousand units that they sold. Yet we only do two hundred. So as you can see um no vacation for me but we're gonna have to come back and turn around all over again and start doing another hundred thousand or whatever they want to come up with so um we are finally got everything in compliance with the co-packer um there were some parts that were missing and that is the major reason why it was delayed we we're not using a your typical 12 ounce standard we're using <coughs> a slick can and it's a popular can, but it's difficult to get. We did get it now. We have a good contract with our company who's going to provide this can for us, but it requires different parts for co-packing. So unfortunately, that was a bummer for us and for Green Lotus. They were ready to get this in the market. They, like I said, they pre-sold pallets um, and they got, they, got, they got something going on pretty good. So we want to make sure we're good support for them and and continue to do more products for them so um that's where we are with green notice as far as cbd live same concept um we were ready to do the production back in june unfortunately the uh, uh deloitte mexico team in mexico came back to us and said hold that thought we have to get some approvals on the label before you guys produce the drinks um Everybody was pretty bummed out about it. Um, you spoke to the guys in Mexico, Janko, Ike, Alejandro, and they really wanted to get the drink launched in August. Unfortunately, because of the regulatory challenges that we had, it pushed it back to September. So now we're going to do it in September. Um, the guys could not hold back. They had a launch party going on and ready to go for the country. So they went ahead and, and introduced all the other products that are going to Mexico, which we presented it before through, I think one of our first podcasts, we showed them the gummies, the tinctures and all the other stuff. So, um, and that's already in, 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 um, in Mexico and going into pharmacies and several other convenience stores. Um, and they just can't wait for the drinks. So we got a hands full, like I said, no vacation for me. So, um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, we're excited. Uh, Co-packer uh, has everything ready to go for the 16 ounces, um, but because of the little pushback or the pushback from the regulatory affairs, we had to move on to Green Lotus. Obviously, Green Lotus were very happy and excited that we're going to do their drink first, and we made a commitment. You know, Michael and Chuck Smith uh, had conversations with Carlos, uh, and and you know, uh, we were. We gave them our word and, and the commitment that we we're going to get this done as soon as possible. It's not an easy task. Green Lotus would know. They, they, they try it by their own hand, so they know that it's not an easy task. Uh, so, you know, uh, little roadblocks, but uh, we're there. We're just down the street. We're there. So we're very excited and, and ready to go. See what, what, what's after this. What brings them? What, what else comes to Rocky Mountain High? Well, we're anxious to get the drinks produced um, for Green Lotus and for us. So our, yeah. our goals are aligned on this one. So oh, yeah, I need to bring it up. Sorry. So that's the can. So it's exciting. We can't wait to get it going. I think uh, the only complaint that we have on this drink, it's just not enough in the drink. <laughs> They're like, why don't you do 16 ounces? <laughs> don't, no, no, don't mess with nothing. Let's, <laughs> we're doing this and we're sticking to this, folks. Don't, don't, don't mess it up. So, so we're good to go. Um, and as far as, you know, hemp, we also got that ready to ro ready and rolling. So that's coming out too. 
So really good things coming out this year. Really good things. Well, I have been on a traveling road show through uh, Michigan with uh, our friends at Carlin Group and have visited several different distributors and food distributors, and they're excited to get the drinks. I've got several different parties that are waiting to get our drinks as soon as we can get them produced. Yeah. So we're uh, we're planning on producing our hemp drinks uh, starting as early as next week if we can get the production run scheduled. We're working on that right now. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm looking at you. I should be looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we've got a lot of good good things going on between our private label runs, our our new relationship with Carlin Group, and the distributors that they're getting us into on our initial meetings with them in the Detroit area. And they're going to be expanding that. Uh, we're gonna have meetings with the rest of their team that'll uh, be set up uh, in September. So I'm um, looking forward to the fall of this year. We've got a lot of things that are moving forward uh, concurrently. In, a, in addition to that, we'll be launching our Sweet Rock Chocolate Bar. I meant to bring an example of the wrappers that we've designed with our marketing team. They're great looking bars, great tasting bars. They'll be infused with CBD. They'll be going into the market initially in the Michigan area uh, through our joint venture with a company called How Sweet It Is out of Lansing, well, actually Holt, Michigan, which is a uh, small town just south of uh, East Lansing, Michigan. So we've got a lot of things that are going on and we're very excited about those things. So uh, I think that uh, this year is going to be very, a uh, very good year, but it's all going to happen in the third and the fourth quarter of this year. So, so now we can talk about the fun stuff that we've been doing. Um, Oscar and I had the chance to go to the CBD launch party and, and uh, celebrate with our friends at CBD Life. And I think the most exciting thing that we did was go to the dinner the night before the CBD launch party. That's right, that's had, right. Had the opportunity to sit next to the CEO of RCH Grupo. That's right. Now, uh, you know, it's like, uh, how can I explain this? It's kind of like meeting the parents we've been dating and now it's time to meet the parents we have some of the directors come here and uh and visit with us several times multiple times right. kathy's only been to mexico city to deliver some samples of products but it was a, a quick in and out so we really didn't know what to expect um but boy they gave us the royal treatment matt uh, you can put up the picture now so when we get there um this this group is is at a whole different level. I mean, they would be they would be at a whole different level here in the U.S. So you can imagine what it's like in in Mexico. Uh, very very professional. Um, they have multiple businesses, and they kind of gave us the tour of everything. And Michael and I were just looking at each other's like, is this even real? Are we in a movie? Well, the funny thing about it was uh, today when we we're preparing for this meeting. Uh, Christian, I think you asked if we got any pictures made with any of them. And my reply was is that they took us on such a fast tour of their corporate office that we didn't have time to do that. They were waiting for us to leave for a tour of their manufacturing facility. And the car that took us from our hotel to their office got lost. Wow. So they were waiting for us when we got there and we literally almost ran through their offices on the tour. Everything is fast in Mexico, <laughs> let me put it this way, <laughs> and especially so Mexico City. Once we walked in the office, it was almost like Janko grabbed us by the collars and ran us through there. <laughs> right, right. And then we, then we got in, a, a, what, three different cars? That's right. It, yeah, that's the was, way they roll there. It was like it was like being in a movie. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, uh, I try to tell you guys when Kathy went in there, she didn't believe me, and now you guys heard the stories from Kathy, right? But you get to experience it yourself, and I'm sure you had a good time. We went yeah. to a manufacturing facility that manufactured um, a little spray, a, a, asthma spray, asthma sprays, right? And it was very interesting because it was a very controlled environment and. It was. It, yeah, it's it's a very uh, a, you know um, I don't want to say it, it's very uh, not a lot of people know about it. So there, it's a it's a working progress right now. Right. And so 
they're developing a couple of things over there that they can work with. There is a product in the United States just like that, and that particular ingredient that, that they need comes from Mexico. Right. So they were like, why don't we just do that one over here? <laughs> so they, they, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, you guys saw how it was. I mean, oh, it's yeah. a very secluded yeah. area was, where you, you got to go through security. You, get, you can't just, anybody like, just walk in there. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was a very, very secure area. So we're, uh, they by no means will have a problem uh, funding any project they get involved with. So anything, the uh, all we heard about was, was their beverage everywhere we went. Um, I was even at the hotel, and we got uh, we got uh, invited up to the executive suites. And even the waiter came up to me and asked, "Well, what do you guys do?" You know, just in conversation. And I started talking to him about the beverage we we're making for a customer there in Mexico with CBD in it. And he just looked up, he looked back and he said, "It's not Rocket High." And I looked at him and I said, "Are you are you kidding me? How do you know about Rocket High?" And he pulls out his phone and he shows me the the picture of Rocket High. He's like. He said, can I shake your hand? And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> he said, can I be a distributor? I said, well, we don't get involved in all that. We're just making the, we're just making the drinks for the customer and the customer's here. Uh, it, but it was to that level. I mean, everywhere you went, people knew about it. Um, and then when we went to the event uh, that night, it, it was just, it was over the top. Um, they had people in from several countries. Um, they had people from Canada, from France. Obviously, those people from the U.S., from Denver, California, Colorado, uh, they were from everywhere. Texas, obviously, we're representing part of Texas. There's other people there from Texas. Um, and these were hand-picked. And then we went to the event, also hand-picked, uh, to the tune of about 400 guests. Mm -hmm. So it was extravagant, to say the least. <laughs> it was. It, it was uh, very well put together. Um, very nice presentation of all the products. And um, they are so, so excited about the new products that we're going to be making for them. Oh, they are. They are. So. It's even to the point where they're like, well, this is even bigger than we thought. Right. Is what the, uh, you know, we had our conversation. Luckily, we had the conversation during the first night for dinner uh, when we met the, uh, the CEO. And, of course, he, uh, he's kind of quizzing you since it's the first time he ever met you. But he... Right. Uh, he really liked us, and uh, he said, hey, um, I just want you guys to know that you stuck it out with us for several years, and um, we always we always will be grateful for that, and we stick to with the people that came and stuck it out with us. And um, you're obviously a witness to that. He's right, right. there next to you. So it, it, he, they really made you feel good, and uh, they're very appreciative of everything that we've done and that we've held out, obviously, for stuff that was out of their control and our control it was the government so but now we are moving forward with um, with the drinks that they want well the exciting thing was is they notified us officially as we sat down at dinner that they had passed the regulatory challenges and Correct. they were moving forward with production of the drinks yes yes in person absolutely and so they had not notified us before that so right it was nice hearing that in person i literally got chill bumps sitting yes. there when they were telling us that because it's been such a long and winding road getting to that point right so we're very excited to move forward with this first production run and very ready to uh have uh, a f successful relationship with them they're right. they're great people they treated us very respectfully while we were there and we really enjoyed being there and, and being in their company so Right, and even the um, the future for our products, uh, we had conversations, brief conversations. Um, obviously, when you go to Mi when you went to Michigan and, and you have your sales deck and you show off our products, in the deck you also have Rocket High, and uh, people are intrigued by that by that beverage as well. Right. So we asked, hey, uh, can we uh, can we have the opportunity to present that? as one of our beverages and they were totally open with that right um and the beauty of it is that they were also open to presenting some of our beverages with their groups that's which right which is a whole different level um they're already gathering up a team to put in california hence the california drink so that's they've got big connections there um so a lot of good stuff a lot of mm -hmm. good stuff that uh that was very exciting um, all kinds of good news that we didn't expect. Uh, we just expected to go there and have a good time, which we did. But uh, the level of uh, 
a professionalism that they carried themselves with is is by far it was very impressive. speaks volumes yeah yes. it did it did so it, you know one of the things in our culture is loyalty is a big deal for us i mean it's um you know through through good days and bad days and that you know they recognize that and i and i'm glad that they were able to, to tell you guys specifically you michael you know eager telling you specifically that you know we 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 stick for those who stick for us and we were not uh there were other companies that fell through that not only um you know uh green lotus was one of them that stick with them ours is another the other one but there was other ones that things just fell through because of the same reasons or go tell affairs and you know something happened this and that with the government why not and so and understandable why the american companies chose to move on um so they they really do appreciate that and i know you know you you guys have heard that but uh i think it was a uh uh, it was good that you specifically heard that from Eker, who was the CEO. Directly. He said it three or four times, so he repeated it. So it was it was very uh, very nice hearing that. Yeah. So, um, like Oscar said, that, that you know, once we get this drink in Mexico, and the, the sky's the limit after that. So, um, and they're they're what we are too, right? They're disruptors, innovators, and disruptors. So. They've always said that anything you guys come up with that is disrupting, send it this way. We'll work right. on that. Send it this way. So, yeah, it, it's just uh, the roadblocks that we hit, but we broke every single one through it, so we're good to go. I'm glad you guys went down there. I, yeah. I wish I would have been there with you guys, but we were trying to achieve Green Lotus throughout that week, exactly on the same day. It was mm -hmm. the 8th of July, of August. <laughs> and so even Alejandro was like, man, come on, bro, is there any? I'm like, well, you, you really want me to go sit next to Carlos and have dinner with him? And he's gonna give me that famous line, why are you here? And now <laughs> they're making my drink. <laughs> so I was like, nah, it's okay. I think I'm gonna pass, uh, you know, I've been to Mexico, it's okay. You guys go on, have a good time, so. Well, we, had, we had a good time, so it was uh, it was worth the trip. So, all right, gentlemen, I appreciate you all being here with me today, and I think we've uh, I think we've covered a lot of ground. So, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been fun.